guys and welcome to Nick Grit. In today's video, I'm finally getting around to doing the gnomes. Christmas just got crazy for me, so I'm really sorry that I was not able to get this done by Christmas. But hey, there's always next Christmas, right guys? So hopefully this will be ready in time by then. Um, hopefully I will have it edited by then. All right, so I made this cute hat in my last tutorial. This hat is gonna be going onto my different version of the normal gnome. In my next video, I'm gonna show how to turn this gnome body into a Santa, basically. So I'm gonna move him out of the way. He's pretty stinking cute too, but I just need him maybe over here instead. There we go, so I can focus on this. If you missed the hat pattern, which I'm not gonna be going over for this video, I do have a technical like part one of this tutorial, basically if you want to make the hat to go along with the gnome he kind of does complete him because otherwise he's just a blind gnome with no hat or an egg might be cute for like an easter bunny i might make an easter egg bunny out of this same body it's pretty cute actually so in this video i'm going to be taking off the hat and we're going over how to make this general shape which you can then add a hat on to we're going to go over how to make the general body how to make this nose and how I attach it. I legit just hot glue it on because I find that that's the most seamless way for me to do that. And then I also am going to be showing you how I do the arms. The arms are actually from my snowman amigurumi. So if you've not seen that, I will link that down below as well if you're interested in making a snowman, but I will go over how to make this cute little mitten to go with the arms for the body. This is a fairly, this is a step-by-step, a, a step, not necessarily a stitch-by-stitch stitch tutorial. So if you are new to crochet, this may not be the best tutorial for you. I will, however, have a printable PDF available for the first week after this is uploaded. So if you want to get the PDF for this on Ravelry, go down below in the first week and you can get that for free. I would recommend doing that now versus later because who knows when I might be posting another free link for that. So, for this tutorial, you will need some yarn. I'm going to be using this really pretty uh, Lion Brand Heartland yarn, and I'm going to be doing a bit of an inverse on this gnome. So I'm gonna be making the same nose. So all I use for that is this pretty cream color. And then I am going to be making the body brown and the hat and the mittens are going to be this green color. I already made the hat, so he's already over here, and I used some faux fur yarn from Hobby Lobby to do the hat as well. Again, links for how to do the hat will be down below, but for the body, I'm gonna be using this really pretty, I think it's like called a Keisha or something like that. I'll put all the names of all the different yarns, all the colorways that I'm using over here, but for now, I'm going to be using also a darning needle as I move all these yarns out of the way. This is my active one that I'm gonna be working with first. We're gonna be doing the body first. Um, I use a darning needle for sewing on. I'm just gonna put that right there. And I'm going to be using some scissors. I have these really cute unicorn ones that I'm in love with just for cutting tails and stuff like that. And I'm also going to be using my Furls crochet hook. This is in a 3.25 millimeter or a um, size D3 crochet hook. I am a Furls affiliate. I fell in love with their crochet hooks when I bought their quarantine kit back in the day. So I would highly recommend them. I know that they are a bit pricey. So if you need to use like say a Susan Bates or a boys or whatever you're most comfortable with, then you go ahead and use whatever you want. Just make sure to use a 3.25 or a D3 or whatever you can get the proper gauge with on this. Try to stay around the same size. Otherwise you might end up with a much smaller or a much larger larger amigurumi than you intend. Let's go ahead and get started. Basically, we're going to be doing the body and the body is pretty simple. You're going to want to be comfortable with working in the round. Uh, for the body, I'm going to be going through the front loop only. I'll explain what that means in just a second. And you're also going to want to be comfortable with doing some increasing. I have a video on how I stagger my stitches versus stacking them. So if you want to learn more about that and understand a bit more in depth about what exactly I'm doing with my increasing, in case you're confused, I'll have that linked down below as well. But for right now, we're going to make a magic ring. My way of making a magic ring is different than other people, but if you know the typical way, then just go ahead and do that. My way, I think, is super easy though. So we're going to create a little slip knot. We're going to put it on our hook. And we're going to chain one and chain two, and then skip 
the second chain that we just made and go into the very first one. Here, you're going to start your first round by placing six single crochet. So one, go back inside, two, go back inside, three, back inside, four, and it's okay that your circle is getting a little bit wider. You will tighten that at the very end. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So to work in the round, A, I'm going to pull that tight so that it is nice and round like so. And we're going to then, you see here, you have two Vs. You've got your front V and your back V. I am personally going through only the front V. That makes it easier later on when I need to do go through the back loop only later on. It's not super important, but I do this for all of my amigurumi pieces, just generally so that I have the flexibility of being able to go through the back loops if I need to, but I will be doing that during the mittens here, and that's why I go through front loop only just to get used to it. So for each of these six stitches, we are now going back inside the very first single crochet that you made and we're going to go through the first loop only and I'm going to put two stitches in every single one of those six stitches that you made. So one and two, go inside the second one, one, go back inside the same second one, two. And we're going to do that all the way around going from six stitches up to 12. So I just glitched out there and I fixed it. There we go. Third stitch one and two so you're technically six stitches into your second round um one and two we are now on the eighth stitch nine and ten both same stitches inside that last one and this is our last stitch 11 and 12 basically we want 12 stitches at the very end of our row so we have one two three four five six seven eight 10, 11, 12, we have 12 stitches. And if you want, you can actually take your tail, put your hook through the center of that stitch and take your tail and kind of loop it through. And that's what I use as a stitch marker. It's easy to remove and easy to pull out if you want it out and I tend to move it along as I finish my rounds basically. So here on round three, we're going to single crochet one. We're gonna be going from 12 stitches up to 18. So we're just gonna add a space between each of our increases because we're increasing six stitches each round only until this round. And then we're gonna be changing the shape up and messing everything up. So it's gonna be fun. So we single crocheted one and going into the next stitch, we're going to single crochet two into that same stitch. So we're increasing. So single crochet one and increase. Do that again, single crochet one, and increase. I had to pull my yarn a little bit, there we go. Single crochet one, and increase. Single crochet one, and increase. Single crochet one, then increase, and then I think we have one more increase. There we go, it's one more repetition basically. So we're going to single crochet one, and then increase. This is our last one. I'm going to move my tail so that now it's going through there. So let's go ahead and pull that out right there, go through and pick it up and pull it through our last stitch from our previous round. So now we're working on four and we're gonna change up the pattern a little bit. We're not increasing six stitches every single round from here on out. We're going to actually only increase three. That's what creates this kind of cone shape because you're only increasing three times instead of the six. You're going from a round shape basically to a bit more of a cone shape. It's like what we did with the hat essentially too. So instead of starting out with our little stem here, we're gonna just immediately start going into these increases. So the way that I do that is we're gonna be going from 18 stitches up to 21. And I'm basically gonna be kind of jumping ahead what you would usually go for your increases. And we're going to single crochet five and then increase on the sixth stitch all the way until the end. So one, two, three, four, five, 
and then increase on the sixth stitch. So six and then technically seven, I guess, because that's a seventh stitch of that repetition. So one, two, oh, don't split my yarn, three, four, five, six, and seven, and one more repetition. So one, two, three, four, five, oop, don't split. There we go, five, and then six, and we're going to increase that now seven. So we're gonna take our tail and pull it through and change it again. And here is where I'm talking about staggering my stitches. I do my work a little bit differently than other people. I don't like my increases to all line up with one another. That is called stacking your increases. And I have a whole video on that down below. It explains it a lot more in depth than I am going to be doing here. But basically I'm going to be splitting my even stitch rounds. So the ones, the, the increase rounds that have an even number, I'm gonna split those in half and put my increase in the center of it basically. So we just did single crochet five and increase. What logistically would be next if you are going to be going up to 24 like we are, would be to single crochet six and increase. But if I did that, my increases would line up. So what I'm going to do instead is we're going to single crochet three. That's half of six. One, two, three, and then increase. One, two, try not to split. This is older yarn, and three. We're gonna do that again. One, two, three, and increase. I'm pull my yarn a little bit. And then one, two, three. And now you can see that there's still six stitches between our increases. They're just spread out. And I just like how that looks a lot better. It's a bit more seamless and you don't end up with this strange spiral line down your work. I like that a lot better. So we're going to go again. One, two, three, and increase. One, oops, split. This is old yarn. Two, and three. So we're going to then move our tail again to our next round. We are now on round six and we're gonna be going up to 27 stitches. So we're going to single crochet seven and increase. Single crochet seven and increase. So it's pretty self-explanatory the entire way. We're basically increasing three stitches and staggering our stitches every single time until we get up to the 42 stitches that makes up the big, like the largest row of our work. So wait a minute, that was one, two, three, four five, six, seven, and increase. I stagger my even rows just to make it easy. And again, I'm going to be posting some, I'm, part, I'm sure you've already seen a couple by at this point, future Cody put in editing stuff as she does uh, to make it make more sense in the post process. So we're going to be basically doing this until we get up to 42 stitches. And I'm hoping that that makes sense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can already see it taking shape and kind of spiny out. There we go. And increase. 
we're gonna move our tail and then I'm gonna show one more round, but between basically rounds seven, I'm gonna show round seven, but for rounds eight through 11, we're going to do that off camera and get that basically to where it needs to be for its width. And then I'll show you what we do after that. So we're going to, again, split and stagger our increases again. And we just did seven. So now for this round, we'd be doing eight. So now instead of eight, we're doing four because that's half and half and you're splitting it in between the two. So one, two, three, four. Oh, I split it. Let's fix that. This is having a hard time, this yarn. I don't know what's going on. One, two, three, four. There we go. And increase. One, two, three, and four. Repeat. One, two, three, four, increase, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and increase, pull our yarn a little bit and bounce the camera for good luck. Again, double the luck. All right, so one, two, three, oops, three, there we go and four. We're going to move our tail forward and basically for row eight we would single crochet nine and increase and do that the entire way around getting us up to 33 stitches. We're currently at 30 right now. Then for row nine we're going to go from 33 up to 36 and again we're going to stagger our increases. So we're going to single crochet five and increase single crochet five. Then for row ten we're going to single crochet 11 and increase, kind of just adding a stitch between our increases every single time as we go along. It gets very tedious and it gets very long. And then from 39, uh, 39 stitches, we're going to go on row 11 and increase up to the 42 stitches that we finally need and single crochet 6 and increase and single crochet 6. Again, I'm posting up little... My heater decided to be very loud all of a sudden. So again, I'm going to be posting a nice little excerpt right here if you would like to see that or you can get the printable PDF down below for free for the first week. Again, you can totally get it for free on this video and it'll, you can take a screenshot however you want to do it, but I'll be right back as soon as I get all of the increasing done for the rest of this and I'll show you how we get the rest of the body done basically. Be right back. All right, so now we are at 42 stitches. This is the most that we're going to be increasing for our gnome. The rest of this pretty much for the main body is we're just going to single crochet around until we start doing our decreases. Let me move this little thing and I can show you. And we're going to actually make this nice little handsome line that kind of designates that that's his bottom. And I'll show you how we do our decreasing. For the main body, we're just going to single crochet around and around and around for 10 rounds. So for rounds 12 through 21, we are just single crocheting around, but that's a hundred stitches and I don't want to put you guys through that. So I'm going to go off camera and do those stitches real quick and I'll be right back just to show you how to do the bottom. And then we will work on the nose and then we'll work on the mittens. Be right back. Okay, so we got all the way down our 10 rows here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to basically start doing our decreases. But the way that I do that in order to create this nice little line is we are going to take our 42 stitches and bring them down to 36 stitches. So to do that, we are going to single crochet five and decrease. But the way that I make it so that there's that nice little line is I'm going to single crochet five and decrease all through this back loop. We are not going to go through the front loop at all. We are just going to skid ahead and go through that back loop like so, leaving our front loop behind, which creates that line essentially. So we're going to single crochet one, going through the back loop two, 
My heat registers are making some clicking noises, so I apologize if you can hear that. Three, and you can see already that the line is forming right there. Four, five, and now you have a choice in your decreasing. You can decrease the way that I usually do, which is to take your hook and go through both loops like so, but honestly, that's a big old pain in the butt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip and then single crochet into the next, and that's going to decrease one stitch. So I'm gonna consider that a decrease. I'm only gonna do that for this one round because I'm going through the back loop. I will show you how I do my decreasing the normal way. So let's go again. We're doing six decreases across this entire piece. Two, three, it's hard to show on the bottom part. Four, five, and now we're going to skip our sixth and go into the seventh and just decrease that one stitch. All going through the back loop only. I'm going to keep doing this all the way around. Mm -hmm. We're on our last repetition, so one, two, three, four, five. This is six, and we're gonna go into the back loop, seven. So now, I'm gonna start going through the front loop only again, for this, we are going to stagger our decreasing and decrease six stitches every single round until we get down to six stitches uh, on our work completely. And then I'm gonna run my tail through the final six stitches and pull that closed. I'm also gonna stuff as I go. So to give you an example, we're going to then go and single crochet one, two, decrease, single crochet one, two, and do that the entire way around. Then you single crochet three, decrease, and then you single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one. You're basically just decreasing that way. So I'm gonna do two here and show you how I do a little decrease real quick. So one and two, and again, there will be a little pop-up of what the pattern is for the decrease part. I probably already posted it on here. And I'm going to take my hook and go through the front loop of my decrease stitches. I'm gonna go through both of them. So now I have two loops like so. That is how I do my invisible decrease. I'm gonna pull my tail well, my working yarn through that, and then I'm gonna put my working yarn through that. And that makes an almost completely invisible decrease. That's what I would do if I was patient enough for it and wanted to try to pull that, but I feel like I'm gonna mess up my tensioning too much while trying to work through the back loops. So I'm going to continue on this round of single crochet two, decrease single crochet two, and then I'm gonna continue to uh, decrease six stitches every single round, staggering my stitches until I get down to six. Be right back. Okay, so I decreased until my last six stitches, and now what I like to do is I'm gonna take my tail, I left a nice long one, I'm gonna feed it through every one of those stitches going from the inside towards the outside. And I'm gonna do that for every single stitch. So we're on, this one's the fifth, and six, and before, I tighten it up. I like to go through the center and pull that through, kind of like so, and then I pull it kind of snug. That way it goes all in on itself and you can't tell. You could tell that some of my polyfill got stuck in my stitches, but other than that, that's my error. I'm gonna pull that through the side. I like to go through a couple different ways with the tail just to make sure that it doesn't want to like go anywhere. We're going to take my unicorn scissors and we're going to chop that off. I'm gonna put that in my tail ends basket. That way nothing is wasted and we have this cute little body that's not really, it's getting too big to be shown on camera. We're gonna be able to take our little hat and put that right there and so now we're gonna work on a nose to put on that. For the nose we are going to use this pretty cream color again in Heartland. 
So I'm gonna put this over here. All right, now that I'm all sorted, we're gonna put this inside of there and we're gonna start working with, again, our 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. So for the nose, we're gonna do something similar to this with our starting rate. So we're gonna start with six stitches inside of our magic ring. I do the ring again by chaining two. My arms are pulling on the side of the desk. Oops. One and two. I try to do those a little bit more loose than I would a normal chain, just so I can get back inside of them fairly easily. Skip and go inside, placing six inside. So one, two, three, oops, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, pull our tail. Oh, that's gonna be annoying. There we go, let's move that out of there. There we go, let's clanky noises. So we're going to take each of these and put an increase in every single one, going from six stitches up to 12. So we're gonna go inside our first stitch, like so. Go back inside our same first stitch, two. Second stitch, three. Second stitch, four. Second stitch, five, uh, third stitch, excuse me, five and third stitch, six, fourth, seven, and eight stitch, fifth is the ninth and the tenth stitch, and then the sixth and final stitch is the eleventh and the twelfth. So for rounds three through five, so for three, four, five, three rounds, we're going to just single crochet around. What might make it easier is if again, take your tail, pull that through, and you can tell where you need to go. I'm probably gonna pop off camera just to do just the three rounds of single crocheting around because that's 48 stitches, 36 stitches, excuse me, I can count, 36 stitches that I don't think I'd really need to show. You just single crochet and put one stitch inside every single one of these 12 stitches and you do that three times, which gets you to your 36. Be right back as soon as this is done and I'll show you how I do my decreasing, but it is very bouncing the camera for good luck. We are now on round six of our nose and here we're just gonna take all 12 of these stitches and bring them down to six. And the way that we do that is we're just going to decrease. I'm going through the front loops of both like so, decrease. And I'm gonna do that for every single stitch. So that was our first, this is our second decrease. We will have six decreases total, six and we are going to want to stuff this and i think this is the perfect time i just did three decreases i want it to be uh, closed enough that i can actually put the stuffing in there without it falling out is basically the goal as i bounce my camera for more good luck all right we're gonna pop that in there and kind of just try to round it off so we don't get it into our stitches basically that would be a headache i kind of just try to roll it onto itself kind of digging it into the nose. I know that sounds so gross, but basically that's what I'm doing and I'm going with it. All right, that could use a little bit more. It's always just your best judgment, whatever you think is good. I tend to ball it a little bit as many people have seen in other tutorials. All right, so there we go. I think that's pretty much good and we're gonna do the three more decreases. And I'm gonna pull that nice and tight because the tighter it is, the less you'll see the holes through the bottom there. It's a balancing act when it comes to tensioning. You gotta do it tight, but not so tight that you're like warping your yarn. And I think that was it. Let me count one, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. Alrighty. So now we're gonna cut our tail and we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the bottom over there. First, I'm going to actually, well, no, I'm gonna take this because it's so close to the top. I'm gonna take this and feed it through the side, further away from where it originated, up here. That way uh, it won't be lost and it won't come unraveled. So now I'll cut it. Put that over there, take our darning needle, move this so that it doesn't cling everywhere. All right, and we're gonna move our tail through the final six stitches two, four, 
five, six, and we're gonna move that through the side like so and pull it tight. And what I'm going to do in order, well also I'm gonna move this up this way so it's a little less close to the center. What I'm going to do is take this nose and I'm literally going to hot glue it to the front of the face. If you want to sew it and that's how you feel comfortable, if you want to take some fabric glue, that's fine, but I find that the easiest way to do this is literally just to take a dab of hot glue, stick it on the front of wherever your hat meets. So if you find that your hat is about right there, because I bounced my camera for more, good luck. All right. I try to put it right where the hat meets. So if you need to put like a little dot from a marker or a fabric pen or whatever to help you figure out where it needs to go, that is what I've, I've been able to do that before. That is where essentially you want to hot glue it. So now we're going to go on to the arms after cutting our tail. And our arms look like that. I've already made one and you're going to want to make two of them. I'm probably going to attach all of this at once so you can see what that looks like then. So for here, I'm going to move my cream yarn out of the way. So for this, you're going to want to do the same starter parts as your nose, basically. So you started with making a magic ring, doing six, and then increasing to 12. However, I leave a nice long tail. This nice long tail is how we're going to make our thumb gusset for the little mitten here and I promise it's the easiest way to do it that I have found. If you found it a better way, go ahead and leave a comment down below, but I like this way. I leave an obscenely long tail, that way I just need to cut it afterwards. And again, I put everything in my yarn mill in so nothing goes to waste. So here I've made an obscenely like 15 inch long tail. It's fine. And we're going to create our magic ring, chaining one and two, and we're going to place six single crochet inside. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna pull our tail. And now it is really important that you work through the front loop only. And I've been doing that for the entire project regardless, but for this one, you will be working through the back loops at some point. So I just do front loop only for all of them anyway. So we're going to go and increase every single one of these stitches from six up to 12, basically. So one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight, nine, and 10, 11 and 12. So here I like to start single crocheting around for rows three through four. So that's 12 stitches times two. So you have 24 stitches. And at the end of that, I'll show you what I do. So one, two, three. I'm gonna fast forward through this. All right, so that is two rounds. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my tail and I'm gonna pull it through as if it's a stitch marker, but it's also gonna be used later on in this same spot, so you're not gonna have to move it twice. So here, we're going to decrease from 12 down to eight. And the way that we do that is we're going to single crochet one and then decrease. So we're decreasing four stitches essentially. So one, put two together, one, put two together, one, put two together. And again, it's really important that you're going through the front loop only. And this is our last decrease, one, and put two together. That brings in our mitten basically. And what we're gonna wanna do from here is we're going to want to spread it out. You'll notice that it kind of pops out goes in and then it goes out really quickly. And the way that we achieve that is we're going to place an increase in every single one of those eight stitches. So we're gonna go from eight up to 16. So here I've skipped these two. We're gonna go right there and place one, 
go back inside the same stitch two one same stitch two one and you can see how it's already blowing out and how that works essentially because your crochet doesn't know where to go so it just goes outward doesn't know what to do with itself increase two and you're going to keep doing that for a total of eight times one and increase two one i think this is the last one and increase two so here we are done with our green right here what i'm going to do is we're going to take our scissors and cut a decently long tail maybe not so absurdly long and what i'm going to do is actually do my seamless fasten off method i've done this for the hat i've done this for a bunch of other stuff we're going to take our tail and pull it through don't worry we will get to the nice little thumb in just a second but what i like to do is take our tail and we're going to basically create a fake stitch right here so that it all looks like it goes together so we're going to skip this stitch and essentially create a stitch over this one and the way that i do that is i take my tail and i go through the stitch after the one from my my end here so i skip one and go into the next and then i go from the front to the back pull that don't tighten it so tight just tighten it so that it actually looks like it's on par with the other stitches and then take your needle and go through the center of your very last stitch that you just crocheted and go through the back and i like to do that and tighten it so that it looks like it's the same size as all the stitches if you need to wiggle it around that's fine and what i like to do is actually go through the back loops of a couple of these stitches i went through this front no i didn't i was a good girl there we go there we go we're gonna take this and i like to use this tail as stuffing essentially so we're gonna shove that inside of our mitten all the way in and now we have two more things to make this truly a mitten to go onto the side of our gnome. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take our tail and we're going to work our hook through the stitch across from where our tail just came out right here. So what I'm going to do is then start working with this yarn. I'm first going to wrap and pull through and chain, go back inside the same spot and single crochet two one go back inside two then go back inside and slip stitch off like so and then what you're going to want to do is to take your tail and you're going to stick it through your little mitten basically we're done with our green <laughs> We're done with our green yarn as I bounce everything everywhere. Um, basically, we're just going to move this through here. And we only have to work with one more thing, which is our brown yarn in making the little stick arm. I do this for my snowman, and I think it turned out really cute. We're going to just stick it through the center and up the top. And I'm actually thinking that this is a little too overstuffed. So what I'm going to do is take all of my tails and kind of give them a little trim. I'm only going to make them about half the size that they were. Again, that can go on my yarn mill ends. And then I'm just going to stuff those back in, making sure that they're not really peeking out. And that is our little mitten size. It's pretty cute, I think, and it looks really nice. So now... There's a reason why I'm kind of pushing this out. We worked through the front loop only of our stitches. It's kind of hard to see them though. So you can see the back loops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The back loops from our round five essentially. And we're going to actually pick up those stitches. We're going to pick it up here, right across from trying not to pick up our little tails. There we go. 
pick it up from across where our thumb is essentially that kind of goes across from there and we're going to take our brown and we're going to slip stitch it on and then single crochet around those eight stitches basically so slip stitch I just do a little chain right there and then I single crochet one find my next back post essentially two Your goal is to get eight. Just to try to find all eight from round five. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Move our tail to the front and it'll make it a bit more obvious where the eighth one is. It's kind of hard to see with how tiny it is. I'm trying not to pick up the... There he is. There he is. Trying not to pick up the tails from earlier. And eight. And now we're just going to go and pick up our first single crochet and start working in the round for those eight stitches and we're going to do that from rows eight through ten so this basically counted as picking up the stitches was round seven when we pick up the back posts and then from rounds eight through ten which is three rounds eight nine ten we are going to just single crochet around kind of just leave your tail there he's kind of fine uh, if you really want on the way, stick them in your mitten, but honestly, I think it's a bit too much, and I'll just cut them short, uh, shorter when we get most of that done. So we're just going to go around for those eight stitches three times, and that's pretty much all that there is to this gnome. Next week, we're going to do the Santa sometime. I'm also going to be making this really cute sn uh, snowball. I've been getting requests on doing the snowball pattern that you use velvet yarn for, which I'm really excited about, and I've made a couple now, but I really want to finish it off. I've been doing the staggering technique with the snowballs as well, which I think makes them a lot more round, so I'll be showing how to do that probably before the Santa, because I've honestly been really excited about it. Um, seven, eight, nine, we have one more round. Probably just gonna fast forward real quick. There we are. We're gonna cut this tail. I'm gonna pull that through. Cut the tail on that as well. Also, a big part of attaching these, if you wanna be uh, super like, detail focused as I tend to try to be anyway you can take your thumbs and yeah it's gonna feel weird attaching them with uh, your yarns going in separate directions but try to make sure that your thumbs are facing and pointing frontwards because it makes them look cuter and it makes it look like you've got an actual left and an actual right hand because that's how thumbs do that and also I attach the arms again right where the brim of the hat meets the body of your back as soon as these are attached all right, now with the nose attached and the arms attached as well, that's pretty much all there is to our little gnome. In our next gnome-related video, so kind of part three, we're going to be doing this cute little Santa. I'm basically just going to go over how to change the hat and how to change the colorways and which ways I do that, and also how to make these cute little, ah, as he falls over, his cute little beard. <laughs> He's just gonna go over. Let's just have him go right there. But basically that's all there is to it. And if you like this video, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. We have now surpassed 42,000 subscribers, which, oh my gosh, that's crazy. I cannot, when I started this channel, I never thought that I'd be able to get that many subscribers. So thank you all very, very much. If you're interested in supporting the channel, then go ahead and go over to our Patreon or our PayPal links. Everything will be linked down below. And if you're interested in our our sister channel called things your sister says uh where i go over my weight loss journey and all kinds of fun stuff like that just general diys that i don't want to put on here because it's not really knitting related or crocheting related as much you can go over there again links will be down below for everything and thank you very much until next time guys bye